Ever since I joined anesthesiology, machine, workstations and equipment all have fascinated me because these gadgets help us a lot and knowing more about equipment is anytime useful and simplifies troubleshooting. I am Dr. Sanish welcoming you to this edition of Anesthesia Tools. This will be module 1 of Anesthesia Breathing Circuits. What is special about this edition is that I have got my senior and a renowned teacher in anesthesiology Dr. Gopakumar also with me to explain the topic in simple terms for easy understanding. What is breathing system? A breathing system is defined as an assembly of components which connects the patient's airway to the anesthetic machine creating an artificial atmosphere from and into which the patient breathes. A breathing system primarily consists of a fresh gas entry port or delivery tube through which the gases are delivered from the machine to the systems, a port to connect it to the patient's airway, a reservoir for gas in the form of a bag or a corrugated tube to meet the peak inspiratory flow requirements, an expiratory port or valve through which the exhaled gas is vented to the atmosphere, corrugated tubes for connecting these components, a carbon dioxide absorber if total rebreathing is to be allowed and flow directing valves may or may not be used. Now requirements of a breathing system. The components when assembled should satisfy certain requirements some essential and others desirable. The breathing system must deliver the gases from the machine to the alveoli in the same concentration as set and in the shortest possible time. It should effectively eliminate carbon dioxide, should have minimal mechanical apparatus uh, dead space and have low resistance. Coming to desirable requirements uh, like uh, economy of fresh gas, conservation of heat, adequate humidification of inspired gas should be lightweight, convenient during use, efficiency during spontaneous as well as controlled ventilation. Remember efficiency is determined in terms of uh, CO2 elimination and fresh gas utilization. Then adaptability for adults, children and mechanical ventilators and provision to reduce the theatre pollution. Now let us take a quick look at the classification of breathing systems. Over to Dr. Gopakumar for the same. Practically breathing systems can be classified into two. Breathing systems with carbon dioxide absorption and breathing systems without carbon dioxide absorption. Each system can again be divided into those with uh, unidirectional flow and those with bidirectional flow. Breathing systems with carbon dioxide absorption with unidirectional flow, you all know the classic uh, circle system and the bidirectional flow is the waters to and fro breathing system. Breathing systems without carbon dioxide absorption Unidirectional flow is the systems which use the unidirectional valves like uh, Fink, Fromin, Rubin, Ampu and breathing systems without carbon dioxide absorption, bidirectional flow, uh, here comes the classic Mapleson breathing systems. Now let us check in detail about Mapleson breathing systems. Mapleson did a theoretical analysis of the fresh gas requirements of semi-closed systems available at that time. It is only proper to refer to it as Mapleson systems as he gave a nomenclature as A, B, C, D and E for easy identification as per their construction. Mapleson has analyzed these bidirectional flow systems using mathematical calculations. He made a few basic assumptions while analyzing breathing systems. These are gases move n block 
they maintain their identity as fresh gas, dead space gas and alveolar gas. There is no mixing of these gases. The reservoir bag continues to fill up without offering any resistance until it is full. The expiratory valve opens as soon as the reservoir bag is full and the pressure inside the system goes above the atmospheric pressure. The valve remains open throughout the expiratory phase without offering any resistance to gas flow and closes at the start of next inspiration when we speak about spontaneous breathing system. Mapleson breathing systems have several common components fresh gas inlet, adjustable pressure limiting valves, reservoir bag, corrugated tubes and a patient connection. The configuration of the Mapleson A system or otherwise called the Magill system, this is the fresh gas inlet. It goes to the fresh gas outlet of the machine like this and then comes the reservoir bag. The reservoir bag is connected to the APL valve at the patient end with the help of a corrugated tube. This is the APL valve. So the bag and the APL valve are connected with the help of a corrugated tube. And after the APL valve comes the patient end which goes either to a face mask or a endotracheal tube. And finally the Mapleson A circuit looks like this. This end goes to the fresh gas port of the machine, reservoir bag. Reservoir bag connected to the APL valve with the help of a corrugated tube. The APL valve, the patient end, which either goes to a mask or an endotracheal tube. When we discuss the functional analysis of Mapleson A system, what we do is, we start from the beginning of expiration and we try to define the end expiratory configuration inside the circuit. When the patient starts expiring, the first gas moving towards the circuit will be the dead space gas followed by the alveolar gas. It moves towards the corrugated tube. Meanwhile, fresh gas enters the circuit from the machine and fills the bag and it also moves towards the corrugated tube. During spontaneous ventilation, the APL valve opens during the latter part of expiration when the pressure inside the circuit is maximum. So at that time in Mapleson A circuit, the gas near the APL valve is the alveolar gas. So the Mapleson A system selectively vents out the alveolar gas during spontaneous ventilation just like any other non-rebreathing valve. So at the end of expiration, the circuit will be filled with fresh gas and part of the dead space gas. So this is the most efficient system, Mapleson system for spontaneous ventilation. The studies show that the fresh gas flow requirement during spontaneous ventilation is only the alveolar ventilation. And for the, to be on the safer side, we put minute ventilation as the fresh gas flow requirement for Mapleson A system during spontaneous ventilation. Now we shall see how this ideal circuit during spontaneous ventilation behaves during controlled ventilation. So for controlled ventilation, we adjust the APL valve so that whenever we skews the bag, the patient gets adequate tidal volume and the AP, here the main difference between spontaneous and controlled ventilation is the APL valve gets opened up during the latter part of expiration during spontaneous ventilation but it gets opened up during inspiration when we use it for controlled ventilation. So when we use Mapleson A circuit for controlled ventilation in a patient as we were discussing before, when the patient starts expiring, the first gas coming to the circuit from the patient end will be the dead space gas. During the end of expiration, the patient end will be filled with alveolar gas and the machine end will be filled with the fresh gas. The APL valve is not getting opened up because in, during controlled ventilation, 
APL valve opens during the peak inspiration. So when we start squeezing the bag during the next inspiration, the first gas going to the patient will be the alveolar gas which is staying near the patient inside the circuit. And during the peak inspiration, when the alveolar uh, APL valve gets opened up, the part of the fresh gas will be getting vented out through the APL valve. So here what happens is, when we use Mapleson A circuit for control ventilation, most of the alveolar gas is rebreathed by the patient and, and part of the fresh gas is getting vented out through the APL valve during control ventilation. So the fresh gas re re flow requirement to prevent rebreathing when we use Mapleson A circuit for control ventilation is three, more than three times the minute ventilation which is not at all economical there is no heat and humidity conservation and there will be chances of atmospheric pollution. The major disadvantage of uh, Mapleson A breathing system is having the APL valve near the patient end. So when the surgery is going on, it is very difficult to access the APL valve since it is near the patient end. It is very difficult to adjust and scavenge. So the lack modified the classic Mapleson A system and it is called lack system. What he has done is the APL valve he changed the position from the patient end to the machine end and another tube from the patient end connects the APL valve. So the expired gas moves through that tube during the expiration and vents out through the APL valve. So it can be either coaxial or parallel arrangement. Okay, I am taking the liberty to wind up module 1 breathing circuits here. Watch out for the subsequent modules. Uh, we have lots and lots to explain, explore and simplify. It's goodbye for the time being. It's me Sanish signing off for Anesthesia Tools.